would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. I'm sure many of you are aware and have seen the articles covering the two meteors that have flashed across Florida skies in the last week. One was a known meteor that they were expecting. The other one was something that kind of came out of nowhere. Now, there wasn't any damage. It did make for some spectacular video, though. And it gives me an opportunity to do a video I've wanted to do for a long time, but haven't really had the proper context, and I think this is probably the best time to do it. Now, this is going to be one of those videos where you need to put your thinking cap on. There's a lot of different roads we have to go down and different ideas we have to explore, but I think these events explain something that happened in Antarctica a long time ago. This topic has been the focus of my channel for quite some time, and the more we uncover, the more we realize that there is a part of history that has been lost completely. Now, this article is from universetoday.com, and it was released not long ago. 100-meter asteroid created a strange impact event in Antarctica 430,000 years ago. Now, what makes this particular event strange is that it wasn't a full impact, and it wasn't an airburst. The event over Tunguska, uh, there was another one over Chelyabinsk back in 2013. They exploded in the atmosphere with enough force that they rattled windows and shook buildings, but they didn't hit the ground. And then, of course, we've seen the images from Hollywood where they show the giant meteor hitting the ground, creating the huge crater. There is something in between, and this is what they have discovered in Antarctica. Now, the accepted wisdom is this on impact events. We might be able to predict them. There's very little we can do to prepare for them. And there's nothing we can do to stop them. And that's really the key. When we talk about Antarctica and the idea that there may have been a civilization there. They may have had some advanced warning of something happening. What we see in our skies these days is evidence of a very advanced civilization that perhaps was forced to make some adaptations because of an event like this. If you knew something was coming and you couldn't stop it, all you would really do is attempt to make some limited preparation or perhaps you would just leave the region. Now, what does this have to do with these two images? Well, on the left, these are random images from the Voynich Manuscript. You would write down your history. You would write down things that were important so that they weren't lost forever. The image on the right is something that I had created a while back 
because there's evidence in European governments that perhaps there was travel to the continent we know to be Antarctica. It was just called a different name. And let me tell you why I believe this to be true. This was how the world was perceived prior to the discovery of North America. What you're looking at here is, of course, Europe on your right, Africa on your left. This is the Mediterranean Sea up here. Here's the North Sea, Great Britain. This is how the world was perceived. There was this giant foreboding ocean. Very little was known about it. Antarctica is larger than the whole of Europe combined. All of this put together, Antarctica is bigger than. Now, ancient mariners, largely when they conducted seafaring travel and trade, stayed near the coast for safety reasons and for efficiency reasons. Now, they had the ability to sail down the coast of Africa. And as you can see, there's evidence of all sorts of European influence all the way down the coast. Now, once they reached South Africa, they were only a few hundred miles away. There's Bouvet Island. And look, there's Antarctica. That's not that far. We have focused a lot on the distance between the tip of South America and Africa. Pardon me, tip of South America and Antarctica. But we haven't really focused on this much. This would have been someplace they could have easily gone. They could have easily trans-navigated trans, uh, from the tip of South Africa to here. This is the idea. Regardless of what Hollywood says, people would react in different ways. Perhaps some would go underground. Perhaps some would leave. Perhaps some would stay and say, you know what, this is where I'm going to live and die. If things had already started to change, for them, this might have been their whole known world. This image I used on the right was from Game of Thrones. It only depicts the area known as the Antarctic Peninsula, to my mind. Here's what we know as you know, Eastern Antarctica, the part that was frozen, and then this area here that we've gone over um, on, in many videos, the parallels between the two. But this area over here, larger than all of Europe, imagine how many different cultures could have developed, completely different from each other. Just like in Europe, you have know, the Italians, you have the Polish, you have the Germans, you have the English, the Spanish, the French, all with different stories, all with different histories, not all one thing. And that might be the key to understanding this continent as well. Is that they were faced with something and perhaps some didn't believe it. Perhaps some partially believed it. And perhaps they just reacted in different ways. We see evidence of giants moving through the southern tip of South America. It's on the maps from the time. The European maps from the 16th and 17th centuries depict giants. It, they depict dragons. Now, at the time, I don't know why they would have wasted the ink or the time if this wasn't what they were seeing. This is my theory about Antarctica. It's a lost world. It wasn't always called Antarctica. It was called something else. 
what we are seeing now, and the U.S. military has admitted, in our skies that is far advanced of what we have technologically, is evidence of a surviving civilization, perhaps one of many civilizations, some perhaps that didn't fare so well, that have continued to evolve in a subterranean world. And now they've reached a stage where they have the ability to rejoin the world community, so to speak. And perhaps they're not too all fired up excited about what they've seen. Perhaps they long for a different world. Maybe they only had limited contact. Maybe they only knew of European culture, Roman culture at the time. And that's the last they knew, and now they come out to a world, and there's Asian culture, and there's African culture, and there's North American culture, and South American culture, and all of these different things, and even European culture has changed. And they've advanced to the point where they don't understand or cannot relate to the world we've created. It might just be that imperfect and that messy. So, anyway, this is my theory. I know it's a complicated road. It's a lot to, to grasp, a lot to take in. This idea of something in between. Total destruction by an asteroid and something that's only an inconvenience that you know is happening. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And there's multiple ways to prepare for it based on culture, based on technological advancement. I mean, look at the difference just in our hemisphere between the technological advances that we enjoy in North America and how they live in the Brazilian rainforest. It might as well be two different planets. It might as well be two different eons. The very same thing could have occurred on a continent we call Antarctica. But it could have been called by a different name long ago. And a lot of what we're seeing, these strange manuscripts, these strange devices, abandoned cities, could have been directly tied to this. I hope everyone's having a good week. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Thank you.